Hello, this is David Ferguson from MLC CAD Systems, and I'd like to just take a couple minutes to talk about applying some mill tool paths uh, in a lathe environment. Uh, what we have on our screen is a clevis of some sort, and uh, we've already turned it down uh, using a basic uh, face rough uh, face finish and finish tool path. So we, we've turned down the basic shape of it. Uh, I've gone ahead and I've generated a stock model to sort of represent uh, what we've done so far. And we'll use that stock model and verify. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at two options for milling uh, these two flats. So we've got a flat on the outside, on this side, and then a flat again on the other side. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll look at a, a toolpath option to mill out uh, this center uh, uh, between the two forks uh, of the clevis. Uh, the first basic option for this style of toolpath is to use a C-axis contour toolpath. Um, and that is a, a perfectly fine uh, toolpath to use. That's located up uh, in your turning gallery, uh, in the C-axis gallery, next to the turning gallery, I should say. Uh, and it's basically just a simple contour style of toolpath. Uh, the chain for that, um, again, very simple, uh, just a single back edge. And then we're stepping that tool over and across. Uh, as well as down. Um, it's a fine way to do that. Um, it's a perfectly acceptable toolpath. Uh, it is something that, uh, you know, uh, without a mill license, you can do in lathe. Uh, that is a toolpath that is included with the basic lathe package. Um, but it's not necessarily always going to feel like the most efficient way to do that. So, um, moving away from sort of a traditional uh, live tooling path, um, we're going to do the other side, or we have done the other side, uh, with a 2D high-speed dynamic mill, um, something that mill users and mill programmers use, uh, you know, habitually. Uh, very, very effective material removal toolpath allows me to set a basic step over uh, and, of course, try to maximize the flute length of my uh, tool. Um, the chains for that, uh, which are a little bit interesting, uh, our machining geometry is effectively the outside edge or top outside edge of that clevis. And then we've also gone ahead and chained most of that edge also as an air region. Um, when I preview that chain, I'm allowing the tool to begin outside in the blue region and then work into that red and black machining region. And that tool path, a little bit more efficient feeling than our simple contour tool path. Uh, the nice thing, of course, about uh, a 2D high-speed dynamic mill uh, is that I can uh, remove a lot of material uh, and stick to a basic step over value. I don't have to worry about burying or overloading or galling up that tool because I'm, I'm trying to push it through too much material. Um, really nice, simple way to do that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use that same tool path, the 2D high-speed dynamic mill, to go ahead and mill out and remove that material between the two forks of that clevis. Now to do that, I've created a little bit of geometry for that. Um, just a, a real basic uh, geometry derived from the solid uh, that I'm going to be using to chain that. And I'm actually going to leave the solid off while I'm chaining. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to my planes manager and I'm going to move my construction and tool plane um, actually, for the moment, they're going to stay on the, uh, the top plane, but I, I will move it uh, to the bottom plane when I want to reverse and do the other side. So just confirming they are on my top plane. So I'm going to jump up uh, to my milling ribbon, and I'm going to grab from the 2D gallery a 2D high-speed dynamic. Now, since I'm using wireframe, uh, I will be chaining this with wireframe. Uh, our strategy would be an inside strategy, and I'm going to go ahead and select a machining region here. Again, just a wireframe chain, just all the way around. Uh, direction does not matter, so I can chain uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't matter for this toolpath, so put a good chain on it. Um, and then to make sure the toolpath understands that there is an open edge here, I'm going to chain this outer edge here uh, as an air region. And I'm going to do that with just a single chain line. And again, direction doesn't matter. When I preview that, that should be the toolpath I'm seeing. Now I have the expand region turned on, and that's perfectly fine, just to give that tool a little bit more room to work. 
So that should be okay. So once I've got that chained, I'll green check, get into the tool path itself. We're gonna be using uh, a quarter inch flat end mill. Uh, I'm gonna be going to my cut parameters next. And I'm gonna go ahead and set my step over. It's already at 12%, that's dictated by the tool. Um, I'm gonna be leaving 20 thou on the walls. Um, this is a roughing tool path, so I would wanna come back and probably finish this up with just a simple contour. Um, and I'm gonna leave the tool now. So it's gonna be a, a, a fairly straightforward uh, dynamic mill. Um, I don't need corner pretreatment. Uh, I could use depth cuts if I was worried about overloading or deflecting that tool, but we'll leave those off for now. I can always add them later if needed. Um, and because I'm starting um, in an air region, even though this is an inside style of tool path, I don't actually need any entry motion because that tool is gonna to be beginning out in that blue air region. Uh, the only thing I really need to dictate here is my linking parameters, and I'm gonna be using an incremental and zero value. Um, that again is, is gonna put my depth right on the, um, the chain height, the inherent uh, Z value that the geometry has. So, so I'll be relative to that. Uh, but I do wanna add just a, a little bit of breakthrough. I'm just gonna add say 20 thou a breakthrough, um, just to make sure that when I do flip this over and go from the other side, that effectively I'm not leaving any, any material um, and the tool paths are overlapping a little bit. Um, next, I'm just gonna check my arc filter, which is off at the moment. Uh, I do wanna turn that on. I don't want this tool path to be linearized if I can avoid it. And I'm just gonna put in sort of my, my favorite values there, just a 30-70 split with pretty much everything turned on. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and I'll generate that tool path. And you can see we've got a, a real nice, simple dynamic mill that's starting, I'm upside down, that's starting out there in the blue area and just working its way in and removing that material. And you can see we're a little bit below that height. That's my breakthrough amount. And that looks all right. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm then going to flip this over and I am going to turn the clevis back on because I'm, I'm losing my bearings a little bit and there's my clevis. Uh, I'm going to flip this over to come from the other direction uh, but I do need to remember to change my construction and tool plane, this time to the bottom plane, because that does have the correct Z orientation for that side of the part. So I'm just going to move my C and T planes down to my bottom tool plane. Now, I could just copy and paste this tool path and adjust the planes, um, but since a lot of those values are going to carry over from the last one, I'll just fire up a new one. So there we go. I'm just going to go ahead and rechain that for my machining region again. Just a simple closed loop chain using that wireframe. And then I also need to go ahead and select an air region. And that's going to be, again, a single entity. Uh, once I've got that chained, uh, I do tend to hit preview chains to make sure I'm seeing what I want to see, and that is what I want. I'll green check to get into the tool path. And, and again, since this is pretty much going to be an identical tool path to the one I just did, just coming from the other side, I'm really just gonna confirm that all my values are carrying over. So I'll just make sure I'm using again the same tool, a quarter inch flat end mill. I'll check my cut parameters, put my eyes on my step over, my stock to leave, my retract strategies, make sure those are all the same. Um, again, entry motion I don't need to use, so I'm, I'm not gonna check that, but I am gonna check my breakthrough real quick. Yep, my 20 thou is still there. My linking parameters, carrying over from the last tool path. There's my depth incremental and zero. That's what I want. And my arc filter again should carry over. And that looks okay. So I'll green check and generate that path. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my simulator options button, which is the button up here next to the left of my G1. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that verify understands that I wanna use that stock model and verify. Uh, since I'm running these milling paths, you know, I want to see the part already turned down or, or whatever tool paths I've already applied to them applied to the material in Verify. So this is an easy way to do that. I can use that stock model in Verify. And then I'm simply going to hold my control key on my keyboard. And I'm going to select uh, my contour, my uh, outside dynamic mill, and of course the two that are doing the inside of the clevis. And I will fire up Verify and we will take a look and see how we did. So there is that stock model in Verify. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a stop condition on this just so I can stop this uh, between operation changes. That way um, I have a moment to look and see what each toolpath did. So running that C-axis contour first, uh, it will run pretty quick. You can see we're stepping that down. Again, not a bad way to do that. 
uh, rolling the part over. Uh, this is the uh, uh, approach using a dynamic mill. And you can see we're starting sort of outside and just removing that material in a nice controlled manner. Again, looks pretty good. And then we're going to do the two clevises. And again, I might want depth cuts here because uh, I do worry about deflection on a lathe. But again, I can always come back and add those later. Uh, just running the basic tool path. You see we're milling out that side of the clevis. We would index our C-axis to bring that over. And we're milling out the other side. I would still need to do a couple of finish passes in there to make it look as nice as I could. Uh, dynamic mill is, of course, a roughing tool path. Um, but that's a relatively easy way to apply what you already know in mill uh, to your turning projects.